TV. Hello everyone, I'm Michael. Welcome to Reading at Home. Have you ever thought about how many different types of birds there are in the world? Well, there are owls, Ooh. kookaburras, pigeons, seagulls, ducks, crows, cockatoos. Oh, that's a lot. <laughs> it gives me an idea. Would you like to hear a story about this special little bird? Reading at home. Shuffle over, Bill the Bear. It is story time. <laughs> This story is called Scragpie, and it's written by Chris Shelton and illustrated by Grant Schofield. Before we start, make sure you're comfortable like Bill the Bear. Shall we begin? Scragpie, hiding from the rain, frightened and scared. A magpie baby cowered and stared. A soggy wet heap of black and white feathers blown from her nest by wild, wintry weather. No mum, no dad, no nest to call home. This poor baby magpie was all on her own. We made her a bed in a big cardboard box. Inside was a nest that was made from old socks. Poor little Maggie, a scraggy, mucky mess, tail feathers falling out. They'll grow back, I guess. Such a scraggy Maggie, that's how she got her name. Scragpie the Magpie is who she became. With a hobble and a trip and, oh dear, a stumble, Scraggy's feet got in a terrible jumble. Walking for Scrag was no easy thing but she practiced each day and refused to give in. Collie wobble legs made walking a chore, slipping and sliding on the kitchen floor. Foot therapy worked, Scrag could walk and run. That's when living with a magpie became lots of fun. Scrag flapped her wings and looked at the sky. Running was fun, but she wanted to fly. Run, flap, run, flap, jump, jump, hop. Up the drive, back again, run, flap, flop. Scrag's wings beat fast. She tried, tried and tried, frantically flapping as she ran down the drive. Day after day, she practiced her flying. She never gave up. She just kept on trying. One day, by magic, Scrag's feet left the ground. A happier magpie you couldn't have found. Her landing was rough, skating in on her belly. When she finally stood up, she was shaking like jelly. <laughs> Thunder and lightning, rain pelting down. Scrag in a mud puddle, sliding round and round. Diving underwater, shaking out her feathers. Belly slides, dips and dives, until she got the shivers. Banging on the back door. Please let me in. A brown muddy magpie soaked to the skin. Snuggled in a towel, warming by the fire. Fixing up her feathers for all to admire. Banging at the back door. Please let me out. Still puddles out there for sliding all about. In and out the puddles, sliding down the path. Playing in the rain, so much better than a bath. Tea time, tucker time, Scrag squawking at the fridge, dancing around her feed bowl and perching on the ridge. Up onto the bench and pleading to be fed, spots spaghetti in the bowl and has self-serve instead. It's a bit cheeky, isn't it? Scrag may not have come first at walking or flying, but by golly galoshes, she came first at trying. When things didn't work the very first time, she'd fluff up her feathers and have another try. Scrag taught us to never give up, never give in, to try again and again. Eventually, you'll win. I guess the best teachers come in all shapes and sizes, even covered in feathers, wearing magpie 
disguises. <laughs> That's the end of our story. Scrag pie. I wonder if Amy has got anything that we can think about from today's story. What do you think? Thinking at home. Uh -huh. Hi, I'm Amy. Have you ever seen a magpie in the sky? I bet they started out just like little scrag pie. She wasn't always able to fly, was she? We learned in the beginning of the story that even walking was tricky for Scraggy. But she tried and she tried and she refused to give up. You know, authors use words in a story to tell us what is happening. These are called action words. And in today's story, there were a lot of action words that told us what Scragpie did. Do you remember some of Scragpie's actions? Remember at the beginning, walking was a chore. And so she was slipping and sliding all over the kitchen floor. Later on in the story, as Scragpie tried and tried, she flapped her wings. Flapped is an action word. Hmm, can you think of some other action words that we could read together? We could flap, run, jump, hop. These are all action words that Scragpie did in the story as well. Maybe you could look out for some action words when you're reading stories. Thanks, Amy. I love action words too, like jump and spin and sing. <laughs> what about build? Well, up next, Brianna's gonna show us how to build a little home for a bird of our own. See you soon. <laughs> Welcome back to Reading at Home. Wasn't it nice of the family in this story to take in lost little scrag pie? They even made her a warm home out of a cardboard box and some old socks. Well, Brianna's in the art room and I think she might be about to show us how to make a little home for a bird of our own. Art at Home. Thanks, Michael. Hi, I'm Brianna, and in the art room today, we're going to make a birdhouse, one that Scragpie might want to live in. For today's craft, we'll need an adult around to supervise, and then we'll need a milk carton, some paint, milk bottle lids, a craft stick, chenille stick, tape, glue, and plenty of bits and bobs to decorate with. I've got some pom-poms, googly eyes, the more the merrier. Now, the first step is to paint your milk carton. As you can see, I've already painted this one, so it's nice and dry. Do you know what colour this one is? Yes, you got it. It's the colour blue. It's one of my favourite colours, but you can paint yours whatever your favourite colour is. Do you know what your favourite colour is? Next step, we're going to get an adult to help us to cut out an entrance on our box. Can you tell me what this shape is? Oh, you got it. It's an arch. And that's where our bird will enter the house from. We're also going to make two flaps on either side and these are going to be our wings because our birdhouse is going to look like a bird too. Now to decorate. Birds have eyes, so I'm going to take my milk carton lids and stick some smaller ones inside the bigger ones, just like so. I'm then going to decorate with some googly eyes and I might add some pom-poms too. I'm going to add one, two, three pom-poms to one eye and then I might add the same number of pom-poms, one, two, three to the other eye. And then I'm going to stick my eyes on. I've got one, two eyes, just stuck on like that. Now what else do birds have? They have beaks, so let's add one. I've got a triangle here cut out of cardboard. I'm going to stick that down just there under the eyes. And then, can you think of anything else a bird might have? Yes, feathers. I bought these at a craft store. So we can stick them on the wings one here and one there. And then maybe even a little one on the top of its head. Now that's looking pretty cute, but I'm not sure how comfortable this birdhouse is going to be. So why don't we add some filling on the inside? I've got some glitter shred here, but if you don't have this, you could use tissue paper or scrunched up newspaper. I'm just going to stick it in our little entrance. And now we might need a perch for our bird, a place where they can sit out and watch the world go by. So. 
get an adult to help you make a little slit under the entrance and then take your craft stick and stick it through just like so. Now it's looking pretty good. So our last step is to hang it on this tree here, the scrag pipe. So I'm going to take a bit of tape and then my chenille stick that's made into a loop and tape it on just like this and then pop it in my tree over here. It's hanging, so now it's time for Scrag Pie to test it out. Here you go, Scrag Pie. What do you think of your new home? Is it comfortable? Thank you. I love what you've done with the place. What a great little home for a magpie. I wish someone would make me a home like that. I also wish we could hear another story. Whoa, I think my wish came true. This looks like a story about a fish with a wish of its own. See you soon. Reading at Home TV. Welcome back to Reading at Home. Have you ever made a wish? Maybe you've wished you were always being cheered on by a crowd. Or maybe you've wished you were really good at a musical instrument. Or maybe you've wished you could fly. <laughs> Our next story is all about a little fish who made an interesting wish of its own. Reading at home. Hello again. Now we're going to read a story titled A Fish with a Wish. This story was written by Katrina Logan and illustrated by Tracy Keller. You ready? Let's get started. Fish didn't feel very special at all. He felt slimy and scaly and silent and small. He had friends of all colour, all shapes and size, who made all sorts of noises from bellows to cries. Fish's friend Cat could meow and purr and curl into a ball to lick his soft fur. Fish's friend Giraffe had a beautiful bleat and hooves that could tap out a rhythmic beat. Fish's friend Cow had a marvellous moo and could bellow and snuffle and chew her cud too. Fish's friend Rooster sang cock-a-doodle-doo while strutting his colourful feathers too. Fish's friend Zebra could whinny and neigh, prancing around in her striped coat all day. Fish's friend Hippo could yawn and wheeze and could wallow in water and mud past his knees. Fish's friend Elephant could rumble so loud, it'd sound like a trumpet or a stampeding crowd. Fisher's friend Pelican had long wings to flap and a bill he could close with a very loud snap. Fish felt it was boring just being a fish. So he held his breath and he made a big wish. I wish I was louder and leaner and long. I wish I was spotty or stripy and strong. But it seemed nothing happened and a fish just felt blue. It was lucky that Cat knew just what to do. Cat gathered the friends to prepare a surprise, a treat to make fish bug out his bugged eyes. An adventure is just what our fish friend could need. The animals bellowing and bleating agreed. They boarded the train and headed for shore. No one wanted fish to feel sad anymore. And soon they set sail on an old pirate ship on the wild waving waves, a wonderful trip. And while they were sailing the deep blue sea Fish smiled and splashed and dived with glee. 
How lucky you are to have gills, fins and scales, laughed his friends as he frolicked with dolphins and whales. But cat and cow couldn't dive like him. They had to wear face masks when they had a swim. Fish suddenly realised that he was unique, even if he was scaly and unable to speak. There were many things Fish was now grateful for, like wonderful friends, fancy fins and much more. Fish's dream to be different was an impossible wish. Fish is now very happy just being a fish. The end. I wonder if there's something we can learn from today's story, A Fish With A Wish. Hmm. Thinking at home. Uh -huh. Have you ever wanted to be different like Fish With A Wish? I really like how all of his friends took him on an adventure so that he could appreciate his unique qualities and how special he was. You know, in the story we read just now, there were some rhyming words. And I noticed that there was a clue that the author put in the title. The title was a fish with a wish. Fish and wish are rhyming words, aren't they? They sound the same at the end. Fish and wish are also part of the same word family because they both end in ish. Can you think of any other words that form part of that word family? I've got some here to show you. Maybe I could read them first and then you could read them after me. Are you ready? Wish, dish, squish. There are some other words in today's story that make up part of another word family. Did you notice the word flap and snap when the author talked about the pelican? Flap and snap are part of the word family because they end in app. Can you think of any other words that have app at the end? Hmm, I'll give you some. How about I read them first and then you read them after me? Flap. Great job. We can use those rhyming words and word families to help us when we're reading. Maybe you could look out for some more word families in the books that you read. Thanks, Amy. I love looking for words that rhyme. It's something I do all the time. <laughs> Wasn't it an amazing adventure the animals went on in this story? Would you like to go on an adventure too? Well, up next, Nicola is going to show us how we can have an adventure of our own. See you soon. Reading at Home TV. Welcome back to Reading at Home. There are so many ways you can have an adventure. You could take a trip to the beach, that sounds like a fun adventure. Or you could go for a bushwalk in the forest. That'd be a great adventure. Or if you use your imagination, you can even have an adventure in your own backyard. Would you like to go on an adventure now? Well, Nicola is outside and she is waiting to show us how. Hi everyone, my name's Nicola. I loved reading about a fish with a wish. That fish went on an adventure. Would you like to come on an adventure with me? Before we start, can you check that you have enough space around you to move and be safe? We're going to start lying down on our belly so we can swim like a fish. Come down flat on your belly. When you get down, can you glue your legs together and point your toes just like the tail of a fish? Lift your legs off the ground and swish, swish side to side. Bring out your arms to the side like the fins of a fish and swish, swish side to side. Stretch your arms out in front, 
Swish, swish, side to side. Let's swim like a shark. Bring your shark fin above your head and swish, swish, moving through the ocean like a shark. Well done, relax your body for a moment. Now we're going to ride in a boat. Reach back for your feet, stretch your arms back, pick up your feet. When you're ready, if you can, lift your knees off the ground, lift your chest off the ground, and just take a gentle sway side to side in your boat and relax. Be careful when you let go of your feet. Let's do that one more time. Reach back with one arm, then the other arm to pick up your feet. If you feel okay, lift your knees, lift your chest, and then take a gentle roll side to side like you're sailing in the ocean. Let go of your feet and relax your body come up to your knees. We're going to go on a train adventure. Step one foot forward. Bring your hands by your side like a locomotion. Move forward and back, forward and back. Let's switch sides. Other leg forward like a train. Toot toot. Locomotion with your hands. Well done everyone. See you next time. Thanks, Nicola. I really enjoyed going on that adventure with her. Yeah, me too. And I hope you've enjoyed all the activities and stories we've shared today. So to continue adventuring through story before we see you again next time, you can join the Premier's Reading Challenge. Simply visit the website on screen. We'll see you again next time for more reading at home. See Bye. you soon. Authorised by the Queensland Government, Brisbane.